Hello there fellow kids. When I was a child, I was all over my PlayStation 1, and the PS2 was a major part of my childhood, giving me days and days of stress, frustration, and ultimately joy. I was a little late to the party when it came to the PS3, but enjoyed it immensely. But what with the byproduct of growing up, college and exam revision and all that, I grew distant with gaming. After all, it does require a lot more commitment than other forms of entertainment. You can read or even watch a movie on the go, on your phone or tablet, but console gaming requires you to sit there and indulge in over 10 hours worth of story in most games. Now a working family man, it's difficult to justify buying a PS4 given that I'm hit with the trials and tribulations of life. But in a way, now that I'm a working family man and have gone through school and college and all that, a time in which your spare time is often necessary for academic work, Surely it's the best time to buy one. Either way though, I waved high and by to the arrival of the next-gen consoles, but recently I've been getting an itch. The reason being, I secretly made a pact with myself that I would buy, or at least attempt to buy a PS3, if they made two games. The first, a Spider-Man game that was as good as the Spider-Man 2 game from the PS2 generation. I loved that game, it was the bomb the free open world of New York at your fingertips, in which you swing around for countless hours on end due to the game's superb swinging mechanics. It was brilliant, and so much fun. And it seemed they did make a game like that, in Marvel's Spider-Man, which is being touted as the perfect Spider-Man game, with swinging mechanics that surpass even the standard setting Spider-Man 2. The second game was if they made a sequel to Red Dead Redemption. I'm a big fan of westerns, especially the Italian productions known as spaghetti westerns, and Red Dead was a dream, it gave you the ability to live in the wild west. It felt like a living, breathing thing. Even when travelling as your character in that game to some remote desert wilderness where there's not a shred of life, it still felt like the land had a soul to it. That's a mighty achievement. And given Rockstar's impeccable record, it will be sickeningly difficult for me not to lay my hands on a sequel to what is probably my favourite game of all time. And they have made a sequel, so both games I dreamt of now exist. But would it be worth buying an entire console simply because I was looking forward to two games? Two games that I'd probably play in a handful of hours on the weekend only? Probably in the long run as there would surely be others added to the collection, but it really comes down to what you want from the console. I'm a movie man, first and foremost, and the PS3 was the central hub of my movie-going experience. I download films, store them onto a hard drive, and plug into my PlayStation and watch. Looking online, I saw that the PS4 didn't have the feature to allow you to watch movies through a hard drive, which was devastating, but then I saw this was a feature that was added, providing you download it for free from the PS Store. And I can say that, after buying the PS4, it completes and perfects my home cinema system. Like with the PS3, you can watch movies from a hard drive. Though there are a few issues, like the fact that there seems to be inconsistencies with which files the PS4 can play. And the rewind and fast forward button is way too sensitive making you forward minutes when you are just trying to forward seconds. I do think the PS3's version was better. The best thing about the PS4 one though, the key difference, is that by simply plugging in your normal phone headphones to the controller, game or movie, all sound is now directed to your headphones. That is outstanding. It's such a massive bonus for someone like me, either surrounded by noise or only having the time to play in the night when everyone's asleep to be able to just put in the headphones and carry on as normal. Not to mention most games, it seems, have an option to automatically adjust the sound to suit headphone users. It's just so perfect, so helpful. I've got a headphone splitter, meaning the wife and I can lie there and watch a whole movie without disturbing anyone or being disturbed. The only thing I would say is that controlling the volume requires you to stop what you are doing and endure a couple of clicks as well as the standard palavras you get with the PS3. But in general, it's one of the many instances where the PS4 irons out the annoyances of the PS3 and makes everything that much more convenient, easier and sophisticated. 
Other examples of this include a button that pauses most games completely, even cutscenes, and diverts you back to the main menu to do something else while the game is still paused in the background. It's also a lot faster than the PS3, everything feels a lot more smoother and there's practically no stress in navigating through the menus. When unboxing, I saw they provide headphones and a HDMI cable with the console. It feels so nice and wholesome, like the makers really want you to enjoy yourself. There's so many things you can think to yourself when playing on the PS3 like, you know, oh that was cool, I wish I could have recorded that, or I wish I could take a screenshot here. And you can with the PS4. There's no need for splitters or anything like that. The PlayStation is actively recording the last 15 minutes of your gameplay, and it takes two clicks to take and save a screenshot. Some games even incorporate this into them, like the new Spider-Man game having a photo mode that you can play with. The biggest drawback is the fact that playing online, aside from the infamous Fortnite game, requires you to have a PlayStation Plus account, or whatever it's called, for 50 quid or so a year, unlike the PS3 where you could play games online for free using your Wi-Fi. It's a bummer, and even though technically with all the bonuses and free games you get it is worth it and you're missing out on an entire world if you don't buy a pass, it did affect my decision in what games I purchased, as I decided not to go for it because I wouldn't be playing regularly. But it meant not getting games like Battlefield 5, which I was looking forward to. Probably the only other annoyance is how easily the memory is taken up, or more to the point just how much memory a lot of games take up, but this is an issue that can be easily rectified with an external hard drive. All in all, first impressions, the PS4 is a step up from its predecessor. If the PS3 is a respectably chiselled rock sculpture, then the PS4 is a sophisticated and suave ice momentum. Those who are more knowledgeable about gaming might find better things or more relevant things to criticise or praise, but for me personally it does everything I hoped it would do plus more, bar a few minor inconveniences. I really like it, and where before I thought that I would need to keep both my PS3 and PS4, it's now actually rendered the former redundant providing I don't want to go back and play PS3 games.